it is the responsibility of any local farmer here in Zimbabwe to ensure that he is diversified on his farm and he has various streams of income when it comes to getting uh, money in his coffers. We are looking at Green Minis production this season. We, as you can see, we are in May and already we have a farmer here who has established his Green Minis and it is headed towards harvesting. You would find that there are certain fundamentals that a farmer needs to take cognizance of if he's going to be successful in his enterprise in Green Millis production. Soon after or immediately after the harvesting of your main food crops, we are talking of tobacco, you might get into droughts or you might get into situations where you don't have enough money, but you still need to sustain your operations at your farm. Your children still need to go to school. But now you need another source of income to ensure that you still have money up until the next season. We are talking of maybe 2024 where you'll be selling your uh, tobacco once again. In this episode, we are going to be looking at the Green Mealy success story. This is a farmer who's managed to establish his green mealies. We are in May. They are already selling. We don't have a lot of farmers with green mealies. They have taken advantage and have been strategic in their establishment. I am joined by Wendy Matashu Mazura, an agronomist, who's going to be taking us through the nitty gritties of producing green mealies here in Zimbabwe. Wendy, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Wadza. Yes. As we get into our discussion, Wendy, can you talk about maybe is it possible for farmers here in Zimbabwe to be producing their green mealies throughout the year? Do we have ecological zones that support green mealies production from January up to December? That's a pertinent question, Wadza, because you find that there are some farmers who want to be producing a crop that they take to the market after every two months. After every three months, they are selling something. So it's quite uh, an interesting topic whereby uh, throughout the year, we are always overwhelmed with farmers asking, can I plant my maize now? Is it time? Can I plant my green mealies in winter? So that's a question that most farmers have. So the important thing to note is that green mealies is like uh, you are establishing a maize crop that you are going to sell as fresh cobs. Mm -hmm. So that's the green mealy part, the gocha maize part. So the important thing when you are establishing your green mealies, you need to understand your agroecological region. Whereby, if you are going to be establishing it during the frost period, you need to understand the time at which the highest incidence of frost is likely to occur in your area. For example, if you are going to be establishing your green mealies in areas where the incidence of frost is low, for example, Midusabi in Chirezi, where the heat units continue to be slightly higher even throughout the winter period, you can establish throughout the year. Then there are some areas where there are some valleys, whereby maybe the incidence of frost is not very high. Those people can even establish green mealies. I'm talking of areas like Yoshamba. There are some pockets of the country. There's Karoye, Mangura, different areas where it's frost-free. In any agroecological zone, there might be some frost-free pockets that farmers can get away with establishing green mealies. So, yes, there are some places where you can plant green mealies throughout the year. But there are some farmers who then are also guided by the history of their agroecological area or their growing uh, area whereby they understand that frost, particularly here, we are in Goromonzi, where the frost incidence usually occurs around July, according to the farmer. Mm -hmm. So the farmer then knows that if I establish my crop earlier, like what we are seeing now, they are about to sell their green mealies. So it's something that you need to take into account, the fact that the establishment should be guided by the region in which you are. But the other important aspect that our farmers should take note of is the fact that where there is higher risk, there are chances of a higher return. Yes. So if you're going to do your green mealies at a time when others are fearing or are still shunning away from doing that crop and you succeed, you, you also stand a chance of making more money. It becomes a more lucrative venture. Okay, now Wendy, you spoke of uh, that aspect that we often have in agricultural economics or economics in general, where you are saying that uh, generally where there's a higher risk, there is a high probability of you getting higher returns, which moves us to our next question. We want to look at profit Profitability. Can we talk about profitability? Those characteristics or those key uh, steps that a farmer might want to engage in to ensure that he is profitable. Indeed, farming is a formidable business. And in any business venture, you need to know where you are going to get the highest return. So if you are doing green millets, for example, the cob is what you are going to be selling more than the grain. So you need to understand the traits that you are looking at if you're going to be selling. So if you're going to sell your green mealies, say for example, you're going to produce between 3,000 to 3,000 dozens per hectare. Mm -hmm. You are also then going to be able to sell at between $1.50 to $3, depending on the selling window. The other important thing that our farmers should take note of is in green mealy production, cob size matters. Mm -hmm. So you really need to sell by the, by the number of cobs. 
whereby you're saying if you're selling a dollar for four a dollar for six a dollar for eight the profitability also differs so for you to get a sizable cob you then also need to make sure that you have established at the correct spacing it's not now about uh, very high plant populations you want to establish at optimum plant populations for green millets which will range from 40,000 to 44,000 plants per hectare some farmers may go as high as 48,000 plants per hectare but farmers need to understand what that an increase in plant population for green millets results in small cobs that might not be attractive on the market mm -hmm. and it might affect even your selling window whereby you might be able to you might not be able to uh, to dispose of all your green millets before the shelf life expires so it's important for you to factor in the cob size. Once you have factored in the cob size and you are selling, for example, for green millies I highlighted earlier on, the return per dollar invested is a dollar fifty to around three dollars, depending on the selling window. People can come from as far as Mutare, Blawai, or Gweru because green millies is done at a time which is off season. Yes. So people would want to come as far as possible for them to get their their crop and sell on the market. Finally, when as we round off this segment, can we maybe talk about those characteristics that attract the farmers to saying I'm going to be purchasing this variety? because uh, my consumers would want such and such a cob of this style. As you can see, this cob is fully loaded with its canes mm -hmm. up to the top, which is very attractive to those, even those who are going to be purchasing this maize uh, by the roadside, maybe the roasted maize or even the boiled ones. Can we talk about those characteristics, those that attract a Zimbabwean farmer to say, I am going to be purchasing this seed because it produced such and such? Thank you so much, Wadza. So for green millet production, a farmer should know the end user what the consumer wants. Some consumers would prefer yellow grain mm -hmm. to white. So you need to know if you're going to be getting the yellow grain or the white grain, which type of grain that you would need to, to purchase. So in terms of the white grain, we are seeing here that the one that you're holding there is an early maturing variety. It matures quite earlier. So it mm -hmm. also gives the farmer a leg period in terms of being on the market first before others. So the farmers look at issues to do with the days to maturity of the crop so that they sell at an opportune time. They also look at the cob size like I highlighted earlier on. As you can see, this is an extra large sized cob that we are showing mm -hmm. of green millies. And it is indeed at the milk dough stage. As you can see, the milk is actually coming out when you press with your finger. So the milk dough stage is what the farmer wants. Then the farmer also wants the taste. For green millies, you are selling because it's going to be roasted or cooked. So if you are going to be selling for that uh, particular trait, you need to get the varieties that are sweet in terms of their taste. Mm -hmm. Then there are issues to do with the shelf life. Where if you are going to harvest today, you'd want your grain to be fresh even for about two days, three days. Yes. If possible, four days. So farmers also look at that. So in conclusion, Waza, farmers who want to buy maize for green millies need to look at the color that is preferred on the market. Is it yellow or white? They need to look at the shelf life. Is the grain going to withstand? Then they also need to look at the taste especially so that they are going to be selling to consumers who keep coming back to buy that particular grain. And then in addition to that, the field holding capacity whereby the dry down needs to be slow as well. If they are going to be establishing green millies, a, a large acreage of green millies like what we are seeing here, they should stagger their crop if it's one variety so that okay. they have a wider harvesting window. But if it's different varieties, they can plant at the same time. For example, here they planted 419, they planted 345, they planted 659, different varieties that will mature at different times so that the farmer increases on profitability. Thank you so much, Wendy. That was very detailed. There you had it, viewers. We're talking of green millies production, beginning with the success story of how you can be profitable in your venture. This cup that I'm holding, I'm sure the farmer is very proud. Every station has its own kennel and the rows are fully loaded, which is very attractive and speaks to profitability at the end of the season. We're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the second segment. Stay tuned. Welcome back, viewers. We are here in the second segment of your program, Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness, in support of Vision 2030, where we are looking at green millies production here in Zimbabwe. You would find that if you do it strategically and on a scalable basis, you are going to be reaping uh, good profits and good profit margins, given that you wouldn't have much competition. We are just getting off of harvesting our tobacco, curing it and sending it to the market. But at the same time, here at Arusha Farm, they are already selling their maize, their green millies, meaning they've been strategic and in 
intentional about it. Now, viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with the producer, Wadzanae Manyore. It's on 077-2807-506. Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wadzanae. Leave your comments and suggestions and make a follow-up on this episode and more on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness with Wadzanae. We are also now available on Twitter, where most of these updates take place. It's at Agribusiness110. Now, viewers, at this point in time, I've taken the liberty of inviting the farm manager here, Mr. Budala. Wa Budala, Dr. Chinga, Mr. Ipachirongwa. Dr. Chinga, Mr. Budanai. Yes. Dr. Chinga, Mr. Chinga, Mr. Chinga, Mr. Chinga, Mr. Chinga. Dr. Chinga, Mr. 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 Chinga, uh, chibageji ni kangu titakachi jikara mid January. Mm -hmm. e pakati ni pakati pa January. Uh, pa kuchikara kwa taka itataka shansa 350 kg base. Ye pasi. Ye fertilizer ye pasi. Tika tanga uchidiri zira. Uh, pa, 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 pa hekta yega yega. Taka nga tichisa 50,000 kennels. Eh, ni, chiko nzere chekuda kukuti ice commercial. Ok. Eh, I green mirrors. Green mirrors kashin chini. Jivano tawara wachiti zo. Eh, Tufa ngu chisa kuma 40 to 45,000. Ok. Plants per hectare. Izo zinuko, zinuko tipa tira kuti. Mwe mune mepo ino pinda mo zaka naka. Kutuwa shiba kichitipe chiti mguri. Unengu wakati kurei. Ok. Saka kuburikiza nizo zo. Tinoti zorele mbijana. Eh, Ndo sa tuta waranyayu tu 50,000. Eh, pa 50,000 niyo atiso tari siri. Kuti ino buda hiri 50,000. Munozi ya mshini watu kasha nsapa i planta. Uye zoezi mwembeo zino kwenye wakubuda. So, tuwa zongo sara tiri roughly kuma 48,000. Alright. Yes. Imi mwabuda la paparazi rino tuwa zoezi mwene mabasa akawanda mwene ita mwene fojika. Mwene witi ya maa kuto jigara. Iba papa tuko na oti tichipu purashiba geichi. Aba maa kuto no jigara nesi. Ye fojika kutuwa zoezi kwa mwena september umu. Eee, e, saka isu tuwa oti tichore nesi wenye ya kuti. Chaka kutumai kuti mwese chiba gecho chimi na jinyuari. Chichizo kui wa mwena mei. Maybe what inspired or motivated. Ndozo yoti nye ya zimari. But mwema karakteristik saka kwa nsa kukupusha. Kuti mimu wanike mchisa chiba gechi mwena jinyuari. Ndezi ribi. Zwa maita risire mzwa maida kuwa achiva. Neku jigara chiba gechi mwena jinyuari. Chichiko wangu wa ino. Kusati kwa niwa kawanda wanachu. Ya izo za wangu tipa shungwe kuti timbo ziye zao. Se ziru wangu ziru kufamba mnika zikurima. Mm -hmm. Zikuti unoko na kurima fojika. Pangwa ya nupera fojika. Unoko na kuiso chiba gecha uche uso tengesa pangwa ya chano. E, Tichizu ti eza wa sezo wa tuku ita ona asi. E, Tukutaku wana kuti tinka kwa nsoko ona uwe remari. Ye kuti tinozo pa washa ndivye duwa ruku greda fojika. E, Tichipa tiriza pa nimonga wa satini chita pa nupaparazi. Ok. Ndo usakataka chi isa chiba kechochi. Takatarisa pa nyaye go orenyu. Imimi rafli pa hekta. Munotari sila mguri ya kaita se. Uye pa kutengesa mruku kutengesa sa kaita se. Na nzuwa mshitaura ya mimi kuti plant population yu nenge ya kato siya na nye commercial maize. Ichi green millies. Munenge mchizo da air circulation ya kanaka. Pa nyaye go orenyu. Zwaka nanga na ne plant population. Zwaka mira se. Uye pa kuzo tengesa kwa mguri ya nyu. Muru tengesa chiri titapo ere. Muru tengesa wanu wanire. Zwaka mira se. Isusu kwa nabaza tinta ndese kutizo, chiba geji kukura kwa chine ita. Asinazo kutimbewe ini kaya kango fanana. Mm -hmm. Asi kukura kwa chine ita chino tisia ni. Isusu kana chinge chiba geji lutaa kuchitengesa. Sewe kutengesa kwa chukita na suno. E, tinotengesa e, ni kukura kwa ita nyingi muguri. Ok. Saka parizu ni tukutengesa dollar for six. Mm -hmm. Kutira kuti, tinoesa wanu, wanuno saru za chiba geji. Atita wati, endaya munu tula chiba geji, kakura za zera ili. Toita ya tino first sell, ya chiba geji uombe. Then to zeta the second sell. Yes, you are going to be able to medium. Mm -hmm. Then, you can get a lot of money. 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 You can get a lot of E, mashuku enye kuru zire kuna wakatari la chirongwa mwano kwa sati pa mwikuda zuno dura. Mashuku enye kuru zire wa munga taoro wataka sana especially pa nye ya zimari. Pa kutimari ya shandis kwa nye maricha zuzoka. Kuru zire wa rimi wakatari la chirongwa. Aywa, pa kuri ma green millies e, wadza andidiku kunye peramu. E, chino ngo kura siku kura kuna ita chimwe chino na ya wani mvurachia. Zichire wakuti pa irrigation yako uninge uri e, uchungo isus pana pata hidi rizari uka mwenchete pa shonda. Kana kwa kuomiru. Nukuti chiba gechi kuno kugoromonzi mvuraya katika sike kuenda. Taka chisima muna januari. E, Taengo chidiri zao. E, Ipapo pekuti kamwechele pa shondo. Kamwechele pa shondo. E, Izo zo zirungo tipatira. Nukuti nasunda tuta samari. Tuta zato tipatira. Varuku ya uzo skotenga. 
tutu zati marito pinda pangwani nguwa. Saka kuwarimi wose warumu na mzwabwe. Chiri mwa chaka naka chikuti unupinza omari pangwa ye kupia tisira kwe go. Ni uti chini nge chaku nyeza. Uye ze chini utika pachibaga icho oji. Ndeche uti tika chitenga sasa izu oji. Chuo mbe choso tachitora. Chino, chino sara chichoma. Chino ncha sara chichoma chana tunuchiko wa foot. Tuzo chipa wa shandi. Ndo uti chibaga chwa shandi chate chii. Chini nge chache sadza. Thank you so much Mr. Budala. Neku ya pachiro ngwa. There you had it viewers. We are talking of Green Millis production from the farm, uh, farm manager's perspective. It was enlightening us on what they did and how the profits they are going to be making are going to be enhancing their profits, uh, their projects here at Arusha Farm. Stay tuned. <laughs> Paris wino nda koka amai grasia aga toni. Wawo ya uzo tenga wachiba gipano pa arusha famu chabaru kuno tengesa. Vash tengesa la zwa wawari kwa bora. Amai grasia ndoku chinga mzai pa chirongwa. Ndino tenda. Tichipita mchirongwa amai grasia. E ndruku zi wajima wa kwa bora. Ndi zipi zwa muno tarisa. Pamune nge mchitenga chibage. Zwa muno tarisira imimi. Kutika nanda tenga chibage. Chibage chanu chichano ga mchiriga. Neva chano chijika kwa bora. Ndi soso. Aywa ndino tenda. Chibage. Nda uya kuzo oda chibage. Chaita kutindu ya kuzo honda chibage ndeche kutinda kango nzo hone mbiri kutipajika usiku pantengisi wa chibage. Chaka shika. Saka hone mbiri iyo yondo saka ndawe ya nasi. Mchuona ndine matsaga hangu kudai. Eee. Ndawe ya kuzo honda chibage ishi. Ndichi shika ndichuona chibage ishi choko adinda kutikana. Nekuda kwa kuti chibage chacho chaka shika. Chibage chino zitenge sa chega ndiri pa maketi. Saka inda bakwa bora. Chibage chango ndo tenge sera ndiri patara. Ndino gocha. Chibage chino varaiza ndi chino zitenge sa chega. Kana nda oda, chibage changu ma dozen ya ndine nda oda. Chine, cha ndino tenge sa chese. Kana cha asara. Ndino tora chibage chono ndono gochira vana. Kana kubikira vana wangu kumba. Ende vano guta. Nekuda kwa uti chibage chacho chaita kasi. Chaka shika. Ndofunga imu nungo zuona o sister kuti chibage chaka shika. E. Chino zitenge sa chega chiri pa market. Ah, maita basa wa mai grasia. Ndino Paris unonda ana vashare wa mumwe wa vanhu vao ya kuzoda chibage vashino tengesa kwa nenge vashitengesa ravari vashare wa ndokuchinga mzai pachirongwa aya makadi zvenyu sister eh chipinda muchirongwa chedu ndirikudziva kuti mimi mune kwamuri kutengesera muri mukataura riri vakatarira kuti muri kuti muchibage cha muri kuoda pano muri kunochitengesera kupi uye vari kuchitenga atingati ma customer enyu vari kugutsikana here nechibage cha muri kuvatengesa chiri kubva pano pa Arusha farm eh tinotenda ndirikufara zvikuru Ni chibage cha ndiri kuhoda pano. Ndiri kutengesera njimbo ya kaita murewa, mtuoko, ma growth point. Tino goja, chimo wano ya vashi uhoda, chiri chinyoro vashida se, vashino shibikira kutimba zao. Ndino daira kuti pano, nda fara zoguti, chibage cha ndawona pano, chaka kura. Ende zoguti chino gona kuti ndisimbe ndiri mbiznes, ndiri kuhoda chibage. Munezi yao di chibage, tino tarisi le kuti, tino zogo kuhoda chibage, vashinji muna... Munana wa Sekutemba, munana wa Oktober, na 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 November. But as sita fara pana pa kuti, tuudaira kuti, vati pa simbaro kuti, tizo kere mbisimis, redi logo cha shibake. Nekuda kwa kuti, nguwa ya vati, tila shibake, green maize yao, tafara zukuru, nekuti nguwa ine, shibake, chineke chiri chishoma. There you had it, viewers, we were looking at Green Millis production and even ending up to the consumer. You know that as you get closer to the mouth or to the end user, you are going to be making more money and it becomes more profitable along the value chain from production and up to our marketing, then consumption. You would find that everyone at the stages of this value chain is satisfied and is happy. We're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back viewers, we are here in the third and final segment of your program where we are looking at the success story of Green Millis production here in Zimbabwe. Today we are in Mashona Land East Goromonzi at Arusha Farm where we are looking at their establishment and how they managed to make sure that their green uh, millies uh, reaches the market looking healthy and in good condition for our consumers. At this point in time I have taken the liberty of once again inviting Wendima Tashi Mazura. She is going to be our anchor looking into our management of the crop, irrigation, even pest and diseases control when it comes to green millies production. When do we are here in the third and final segment? Welcome back. Thank you so much, Wadza. Now, when it comes to management, we cannot ignore the importance of irrigation. Can you talk about irrigation scheduling and how irrigation can be used to ensure that the green millies is healthy and uh, good looking for our consumers? Indeed, green millie production is really a profitable venture and irrigation plays a pivotal role. So it's important for farmers to understand that this particular crop here was established in January. So it got a bit of rainfall. 
But once the rainfall was terminated prematurely, like what we saw come mid-February, the rains were already tailing off. Come end of February, they were tailing off. But the crop was at a critical point of growth. So it's important for you to have irrigation so that you can supplement and complement the rainfall if you are going to be establishing green millies in, uh, in or just around the rainfall period. But for those farmers who are going to be establishing their crop uh, at a time when there is no rainfall at all, whereby they are going to be establishing soon after winter or in the August window, September, October window, it's important for them to understand the amount of water that is required for them to successfully establish a, a maize crop. Given that uh, that window is when we get the highest heat units, Wadza, did you know that that's the period when we get about 40% of our heat units from October, November to December? So you need to get the right amount of water when you're irrigating, guided by irrigation scheduling. But here's a rough rule of thumb, if you're going to be doing your maize, guided by the variety that you're going to be doing, is it early, is it medium, is it late? For it to reach the milk dose stage, you're going to require uh, around 500 millimeters of water for you to get the crop to reach the milk milk dose stage. And the other thing that our farmers should understand is that the, uh, the water holding capacity of the soil also differs by the type of soil you have. For clay soils, the water holding capacity is going to be higher, while for sandy soils, it's going to be lower. So you need to be guided by irrigation scheduling and checking on a regular basis in terms of the level of irrigation, before irrigation with an auger and after irrigation so that you make informed decisions. Thank you so much, Wendy. I want us to talk about the major pitfalls in green millet production. You would find that any cropping venture, farmers might end up having a love relationship with agriculture because of the pests and diseases that can be a nuisance in their cropping enterprises. Can you talk about those pests and diseases that are specific for green millet production here in Zimbabwe? Given that green millet is established off-season when most people don't have a green millet crop or a maize crop, so to say, it means that there are chances that the farmer might incur what we refer to as maize streak virus. Why? Because the maize streak virus might, might be associated with the surroundings, the green vegetation that might be surrounding the maize crop. So the farmers need to also then to treat their maize seed before they establish their crop with a seed treatment that guards against uh, the maize streak virus. And then they need to come in at a later stage if they start noticing the vectors which are the leaf whoppers which also transmit the virus. If they see those they can come in with your dimethoate or any other product that might deal with the leaf whoppers so that they don't spread the maize streak virus. That's one challenge particularly because the the green mill is established off season. The other challenge is that when the green mill is established, Initially, the temperatures will be low, so the, uh, the incidence of pests is also low, even including the fall armyworm. But as the crop grows, it also gets into a warmer period, where we are getting into July, into August, September, October, it gets warmer. So the insect pest pressure also increases, particularly from the problematic fall armyworm. So our farmers are employed on to scout regularly in a systematic way to determine whether or not the fall armyworm has infested their crop, so that they can make a decision to control before the economic threshold level or economic injury level has been reached. We want to caution our farmers from just spraying the crops <laughs> for before noticing that there is a challenge which is significant or that might affect yield. Because we also want to be sustainable in our initiatives where we are also moving hand in glove with the sustainable development goals where we also just want to be cautious of the environment. So an integrated pest management approach is encouraged where if you see maybe the egg masses of the four armyworm, you are encouraged to come in and just break them without even spraying anything. Then you can also make sure that you are imploring some other practices that destroy the, 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 the weeds that might also harbor the insect yes, pests. Yes. So it's important for you to integrate different approaches, not just chemical control only, because we want to be sustainable in our management of insect pests. Thank you so much, Wendy. That was a very detailed presentation. And I like the fact that you alluded to the fact that we need to incorporate various tactics and employ different strategies to ensure that our food is clean and everyone at the end of the day remains profitable in their ventures. It was a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you so much, Wadza. It's always a pleasure. From me, your host, Wadza Nae Manyore. I'm also on Instagram. It's a W Manyore. And the crew behind the scenes. Have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching.